Okay, my friends, this all started out with this meteorite that it turns out to be extremely valuable, and I think I know exactly what it is, so I start to show meteorites with blood in them. Okay, so my friends, it started out with that, but it's progressed to something. I get the shock of my life, and you will too, I think. Okay, good morning, my outstanding friends. It's Roger once again, and... Today we're going to go take a very, very deep dive into the things that are in our celestial realm, which means meteorites, basically. And, of course, moons. We're going to go into meteorites, moons, asteroids, comets. What is all that stuff running around in space? We're going to find out. But this guy kept this rock for 20 years thinking it was, was solid gold or it was gold in here. But he could never open it up because it's a turn into metal. Because it's a meteorite. And then he found out it's a meteorite. It's worth more than gold, apparently, is what they say. Now, this is an iron meteorite, a metal meteorite. There are different types of meteorites. And this is a, a, con, a chondrule type of meteorite. Let me show you something on Earth that is the equivalent, right there. All right, this rock right here is the exact equivalent of that rock right there, only it hasn't turned into metal. What would make it turn into metal? Well, I know a lot about metal, and I can tell you why I know a lot about metal. Let me take this and show you. This is why, right here. My father was a general manager for Wallingford Steel Company, Allegheny Ludlam Steel Company, long ago, 1950s. All the way up till, you know, I don't know, 1980, 90, somewhere in that area. This is a stainless steel Ford, 36 Ford. I actually worked on that car. I put the, put the floorboards in. <laughs> and they were boards. They were made out of red oak. <laughs> Body by Fisher. And, and um, they found this, there was only six of them ever made because they just, they, it was too hard to make. The, the, the steel's too, too tough. Uh, but they found this one in 1960 or so. And um, I worked on it with my father and a bunch of different people. But I, did, I was specifically targeted to do the woodworking, the, 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 the floorboards. That's I did a lot of woodworking. So anyway, that's... I, he, this is the stainless super metals. I understand exactly how they make steel and how they make metals and why you have all these different crystalline patterns in the, in the um, iron meteorites. We're going to get into this pretty deep because I have some meteorites here. And this guy's meteorite here, um, he was pretty excited about it. And I'm going to show you a lot of meteorites. And we're going to discuss the different types of meteorites. Because there are a lot of different types of meteorites. So let's get started. Meteorite day at Mud Fossil University. Okay, my friends, this is going to turn into a ramble because there's so much in this involved in this that I just sort of have to bring you through the research with me. I'm pretending like I just never knew anything about this and I'm just starting to understand it. And I'm looking at an iron meteorite or a metal meteorite. I don't think anybody would disagree with that. It's sliced. Now, as I examine this, I look at these different crystal patterns. I say, well, what is that from? And I do understand it is from different types of metals. And these are the transition metals right in here. And these primarily are what are in your blood. You know, there's all these other stuff that's in your blood too. But this transition metals, what they do is they move molecules through your body. And they need to latch on to other molecules. So that's why they have these crystal patterns. Just think of it that way. They're all a little different and they all click to a different type of chemistry. Now, what is this and what's that? What the hell is going on there? What is this? And why is this all crunchy like there on the edge? Well, let's examine these first. I'm going to come, come in real close here. Let's see. The first thing I see is there's two different colors there. The one on the top is red. 
Let me come in real close and see if you can see that. That's red. I think you can see that's red. All right, now, let's see what we got when we come back out of here. We got black. What the heck is going on there? We got red and we got black. And then over on the edge, what do we have here? We have some scruffy looking reddish scruffy looking layerish stuff. What is those layers? And they are not the same as the metal. This is totally different. The surface, well not totally different, but quite different. And I will show you, I have a meteor right here, which is similar, and, um, and I will show you exactly what these things are. So again, this is going to turn into a little bit of a ramble. It's just going to take some time to do. But I showed you this is red blood and that is the vein blood. This is artery vein. This is metal. Metal is in the transition metals and all these different metals that are in blood. Blood is literally 100% metal almost. When it burns and boils off all this cheap stuff, you end up with a metal. This is probably a heart. Well, I think this is probably a liver because it doesn't have a lot of plumbing in it. It has, but it has a lot of metals. And that's what livers have. Now, a heart and a lung, different story. They have a little more plumbing, and they have, especially the, the lungs. The lungs will come out looking like this quite a bit. As a matter of fact, this is a, a meteorite lung right here. You see? See all the holes in it? That's a lung. And, it, I, and I, I can actually prove that is a lung. And I am going to show you there is still red blood in that lung. And that is a, a meteorite. It came through space when they're small. They don't cook off all the cheap stuff. They just they don't get hot enough. That's the key. It's temperature related. The bigger it is, the hotter it is, the almost it turns into 100% iron and the heavier metals. Let me show you the Williamette meteorite. And again, it's, it, it, the Williamette is just exactly like this, only it came through space and everything cooked off except the metals. You can still see some red blood in these these cavities that are in the, uh, the um, tubing of that Williamette meteorite. Let me show it to you. Alright, like I said, we're going to do this research together. Now, this is one of the little um, alveoli holes. Now, let's see, we're going to see maybe a taste come out of here, but it's you could you, it'll take a second or two before you see anything bubble out of there but it should bubble out a little bit now it's like i say this was cooked off so anything that had a specific chemistry to it was was changed and if you change an enzyme even the tiniest little bit blip, it doesn't work now underneath though I got a feeling we're going to have some more enzymes. I'm going to drill down inside, which I normally do to get the blood, and I'm going to drill down into this and see if we can get to some fresh enzymes. Hold on, here we go. All right, I don't know if you'll be able to see this or not as I do it, but what I'm going to do is I have a little tiny pin drill. And I'm going to get into that hole right up in here somewhere, right there. That should get us a pretty deep spot. Now, let me go put some water in there, flush it out. Okay, let's try again now. This is the drill. I believe this is where I drilled. No, well, I'm positive. Here we go. Let me get a little hydrogen peroxide and see if it, if it gets a better response. That's what I'm hoping. I'm seeing some action, but I'm seeing action everywhere, but I think this thing is going to really let go in a second. Yeah, I'm seeing some serious action now. It's just like that big iron meteorite. If you tried to get some blood off of the surface of where that artery went in there, you wouldn't get it. But down inside, you could see it was still red bloody. Let's come right down onto that. Hold on. Just 
gets a little tricky. It's kind of a glare to the... Wow, look at that. There's something alive in there. Holy smokes. There's something alive. That's look, That looks alive. Oh my God. Holy crap. <laughs> What is going on? What is going on? Do you see this? Is that visible in a microscope? Watch right up there. Let me... It, it's still it, gyrating. Let me put a little more light on it. I don't know if you can see it, but boy, I can see it just as clear as it can be. You see it? That looks alive to me. That does not look like something that's just like a hair or something. But see how I'm getting a lot of bubbles now? Before, we're down deep inside. And that, that, that thing was very, very, very strange. Now we're getting the reactivity. See, this is what I told you before. This is what you want to see when you have fairly reactive blood. You see all those bubbles coming out of there? There's a lot of shine from the microscope too. And what happened to our little worm buddy here? Here he is. Must be on lunch break or something. I don't know. He's not moving around that much anymore. But you see all these little bubbles? That's that's catalase. That is catalase in action. And I gotta get to go back and look at that video to see what happened with that little thing. There it is right there. It's moving again a little bit. It looked like something that was was moving on its own. I don't know. But I can tell you one thing for sure. Catalase is the thing that's biological. It's an enzyme. It's created by life. And it attacks hydrogen peroxide. turns it into water. That's what it's doing right here, right in front of your face. And because I drilled down there, it's becoming more reactive. So the deeper you go, I only went, I don't know, a tenth of an inch or something. But if you went like a quarter of an inch, a half an inch, you know, you'd be right into fresh blood. Now I got another meteorite here. I want to try the same thing. All right, everybody always asks me how I get the DNA anyway to get the DNA tested, which I have on my mud fossils. I find an artery. There's an artery right there. Now, what do I do with it? Well, here's what I do. Well, I don't know if you'll be able to see this or not as I do it, but what I'm going to do is I have a little tiny pin drill. And I'm going to get into that hole right up in here, something right there. Now, I'm drilling in to where it's not been heated so dramatically. Now, I'm only going to, like, I think maybe a tenth of an inch or so, very little. And then I'm going to wash it all off. deep spot. Now, let me go put some water in there and flush it off. All right, so I, I watched it for quite some time, and it seemed to be doing the same thing you saw it doing. And then eventually so much of the catalase started to take effect that I really couldn't see it anymore. And here's here's what I'm showing here. Now, see a lot it? of shine from the microscope too. And what happened to our little worm buddy here? You see how much... There he is. Oh yeah, I did see him a little bit more. 
but I see how much catalase reaction is going on now, and that's because I drilled down into it. There's a ton of fresh Must blood. Be on a lunch break or something. I don't know. He's not moving around that much anymore. But you see all these little bubbles. That's that's catalase. That is catalase in action. Look at this. I just clicked off of that other stuff and I jumped back here to. I get all these science alerts. Scientists revive ancient zombie virus frozen for eons in Siberia. Well, maybe they're coming from outer space too. Who knows?